Hi, it's Joy, and today I'm going to be watching The Last of Us, Season 1, Episode 6, Kin, which makes me hopeful that we're going to be meeting Tommy this episode. So I suppose we could meet someone else that's Kin, but I have no idea how far they are from Wyoming. It's like somewhere in the middle of America, I think. This show is phenomenal. You don't need me to tell you that. A reminder that you can find the unedited version of this reaction and all of my reactions on my Patreon, and let's go! Fuck, yep. We skipped a lot of time and a lot of them getting to know each other and bonding. He's got a girl with him. Can I come down? No. <laughs> Ellie. Oh, wow. What did I just say? Joel, come on, they're like a thousand. Who's this little <laughs> psycho? Never anywhere people used to be. You can't Jeez. go there no more. So you haven't heard the name Tommy? Nope. It honestly seems like the world is getting worse over these 20 years. Nothing that we haven't successfully pushed back against the infected or anything. Ellie is so truly the only hope because otherwise the infected are just going to win. If your brother is west of the river, he's gone. <sighs> You're not going to scare us. No, scare you. my love. <laughs> Joel? Okay, okay. Don't fight. No, no, but are you? Because just a reminder that Is it a panic attack? I'm fine. Okay. Was that a bit of a panic attack because he doesn't know where he's going? Like, we kind of, for ages, they were traveling, we were getting to Wyoming, we're going to find him there. And now, like, they're there, I presume. And it's just like, there was no sign of him. Everything's terrible. The infected are everywhere. There's murderous people. It wasn't a heart attack, it was a panic attack, right, Joel? Right? Just a... And she's scared of being alone. Oh, Starving. Should have stolen two rabbits. We can get our own rabbits. You gonna teach me how? Just keep moving. You, you should teach her how. Just on the off chance, if something were to happen to you, so she could look out for herself. The ranch. Cool. What kind? <laughs> sheep. I would raise sheep. They're quiet. <laughs> Do what they're told. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Dream of. The moon. Sheep ranches on the moon. <laughs> oh well. That was such a dad thing to say. They are so close now. Damn. <laughs> you know Will Livingston. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh lord. I think that was the rhythm of death. Do Do you know someone called Tommy? You. If you're infected, he will smell it and he will rip you up. Does Ellie count? Does Ellie... Oh, fuck. Surely the infection isn't live in Ellie right now, right? That was the beginning of another panic attack. He cared about her so much. Like, oh, Pedro Pascal. Like, the look on his face. Like, he has gone beyond just this is a kid that I want to protect and, like, I don't particularly want to watch die. So, like, that is Ellie. I'm like, I'm very sure she's going to die. Like, he was. The, 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 the stress. What's her name? Joel. Does she know Tommy? Tommy! Oh my god. <laughs> this is so lovely, but also Ellie's gonna be like scared that she's gonna lose Joel now. Because they've grown very close. It's okay, sweetheart. He still cares about you. A bad reputation doesn't mean you're bad. Not always, at least. Mm. Oof. Maria is family, actually. Oh shit! Congrats. <laughs> Sheep. Hey Joel, check it. <laughs> <laughs> Democratically elected, serving three hundred people, including children. I like this place so far. Is there a dark side? Please don't say there's a dark side. Hunting. So, uh, communism. 
No, I didn't like that. It is that, mm -hmm. literally. This is the communist. Yes. We're communists. Communism isn't what the Yay. American no, government wants you to one. think it is. Joe. You'll be fine. She's scared that he's going to uh, yeah. leave her. There's a payment. Joel's keeping him... Like, why isn't he being honest? Because he wasn't honest about Tess. And he wasn't honest... Like, he wanted the battery to come out here and find you. So you know where they might be? They didn't have to take me in, but they did. And all they ask is that I follow their rules. I'm your brother. Yeah, I'm aware. You kind of abandoned him. They're very protective of this place. If you knew the shit that I've been through, Tommy, trying to find you these last few months... I'm going to be a father. I wondered. Three is a few months long now. Guess we'll find out. Kind of feels like Joel's lost we'll everything. Out. That's all you got? Just because life stopped for you? doesn't mean it has to stop for me. That's true. Go grab some supplies and be out of your hair in the morning. That is very true, but at the same time, you did kind of find this piece of heaven, this perfect plate, and then just leave your brother to it. Like, don't need him anymore, I'm moving on. When he needed you most, you moved on without him. Is it panic attacks? Please say it's panic attacks and not medical. It's not good, whatever it is. Gross. <laughs> that was kind. That's the people they lost. That's Sarah. I'm sorry about your kids. It's okay. I'm a kid. Just kind of. Oh, is she going to tell her about Joel's Sarah was Joel's daughter? Mm hmm. I guess that explains him a little. Look, I'm not going to ask you. And Tommy did it too. Are you worried about him? Hmm. Tommy was following Joel the way you are now. Well, maybe I'm smarter than Tommy. No offense. <laughs> the only people who can betray us? are the ones we trust. Okay, that is very, very true, but Joel has proven himself to her time and again. He could have ditched her at any point along the road and had a far easier, quicker time of it with the rations all to himself. Like, he's proven she can trust him. I know you're happy for me. It's just... It's complicated for you. He's just I'm drowning. Sorry. From the beginning. Good. I couldn't think of anything to say. You've been through a lot. I was so afraid. I know. And I have dreams. Glad he's telling someone. Every this night. is this is also really important because you know Joel is is a big tough fight man. Yet he's able to talk about his feelings and he doesn't keep it wrapped inside. Too many men, society conditions them to keep everything inside and not talk about it because you have to look at it tough. And that is why there is such a huge rate of male suicide and male mental health issues and people do not ask for help in the same way. Ask for help if you need it. Talk to someone if you need it. We're kind of in a wake up. I've lost something. I'm failing in my sleep. It's all I've been. It's all I've ever done. No. It's failing. Again. Didn't I'm fail, Sarah. I'm just gonna get her killed. I know it. And I have to leave her. Joel. Joel. I mean, it's why you took off on me, right? To make up for the things we did. It's the last thing I'll ever ask of you. I swear. Joel is drowning. You won't fail, Ellie. Because you didn't fail Sarah. It was beyond your control. If you could have taken that bullet, you'd have done it. A thousand times. And she knew that. If you're going to ditch me, ditch me. Cares about what you exactly so did you much. Hear? You know, I stood up for you today because I thought... You fought right, Ellie. A decision for your own good. 
You'd be way better off with Tommy. He means that. He thinks he it's true. He knows better than I do. Do you right? give a shit about me or not? Of course I do. Then what are you so afraid of? Sarah. I'm not her, you know. Oh. Maria told me about Sarah and... No. Everybody I have cared for has either died or left me. Everybody fucking except for you! So don't tell me that I'd be safe with somebody else because the truth is, I would just be more scared. It's true. It's okay yeah. to let people in, Joel. You're not my daughter. And I sure as hell ain't your dad. We're going our separate ways. I'm not protecting either of you by doing this. You deserve a choice. I still think you'd be better off with Tommy. Let's go. Okay. Oh. Oh. He loves you, okay, more than he wants to because you spend three, four months traveling every day with someone, spending all your time together, and they're as kind and lovely as she is, and he's as protective and lets himself laugh at her stupid puns when he doesn't want to. Like, they love each other. They have to. It's not she's not going to replace Sarah, he's not going to replace the parents she never knew, but they have, a, they are a bond that cannot be replaced. And I also just don't think it would be the worst idea for Tommy to also come with them as like a guide. They do love each other, it's just, they live through the end of the world together. I do still feel a little bit like Tommy abandoned Joel when Joel needed him most, but maybe that's what Tommy needed Welcome. to do to survive. You know what my Tomorrow perfect then. ending is gonna be? That we cure everything and then they come and they live here and they're happy. And if something else happens and one or both of them doesn't make it, that's not what happened and they came and they lived here. Yeah. I'm scared. They're in very like we haven't really come up like obviously we came across yeah. Kansas City and like the mess there, but we haven't come across any of the raiders or whatever that they talked about and it feels inevitable that we are going to now. I love him for not leaving her. I'm teaching Ellie? Right. You're flinching. The target's too small. I made it bigger than I should have. Eject the cartridge. So they have unlimited ammunition. Not flinching. It isn't gonna work. It doesn't aim right. You dick. <laughs> I love them so much. We were called contractors. The contractor. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Everybody loved contractors. <laughs> nice. She said earlier, you can tell me. She's leaning against him. Oh, I love her so much. Not very much. Not she said earlier, he could tell her anything and she'd believe it. But just the, the, the trust they've built. Like, honestly, I think they needed that moment. That her to know about Sarah, to know the pain that's guiding him. Him to almost leave her and then come back I mean that's like just fucking emotional I love them so much their bond though it's too chill and nice it's gonna end in a cliffhanger right made it in five days easy days I don't know what Tommy was so oh. afraid of still time to find out mm -hmm. still time to find out the contractor mascot it's kind of sheep we'll see <laughs> you step closer to your dream Way. Has this place been hit? Is there no one here? Like, is this ultimately going to end with them just not finding a, not finding any scientists and it just being about living and like staying alive? Because that's so depressing in so many ways. Because all we keep seeing is evidence that the infected numbers are just growing and overwhelming more and more cities. But by now, I'm convinced that that's going to be like. The thing that makes us all lower our guard, really, for the really scary thing to happen. But it could also just have a nice ending where they're like, damn it, they're not here, we've got to go somewhere else. I'm going to be stressed until the episode ends, or something's going to come. I don't know. Oh no. Those look like scary people. Jump! Oh, Ellie, my love. Let's go before his friends arrive. Who the fuck is it? Don't put 
out, don't pull it 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 out! Go! Get on the horse! The horse! Listen to Ellie! Go! She's gonna have to care for him now and pray those people don't hunt them down. He needs his wound dealt with. Shit. Joel, open your eyes. Open your eyes. This is the baby. I can't fucking do this without you. I know. I don't know where the fuck I'm going. What the fuck I'm gonna do. Joel. He's not dead, right? Like... I know it's dumb, but like, I need to know how to feel. Like, if he's dead, I'll be sobbing. And if he's just seriously injured, I'll be stressed. Like, those are very different emotions. And my whole review section will be very different depending on his existence and how, how, how he is. But I also don't want to, like, Google it because I don't want to accidentally get spoilers from the game because I have a horrible feeling that he dies at some point in the game. Um, just from, you know, it being a huge game that was out and people talked about and I didn't know what they were talking about. But also, like, he's not dead now. That, that's not how he dies. I mean, if he is dead, Ellie's best bet is to go back to Jackson. And then when she's there, be like, hey, so your brother's dead. Will you take me to Salt Lake City? <laughs> so I just genuinely, like, part. I want to Google it. I want to Google, like, is he dead? I want to Google the promo for next week to see if, like, it's Ellie, like, trying to keep him alive while he recovers or something. But at the same time, I, I, I'm going to go with he's not dead. And I will cry my eyes out next week if he is. Because, yeah. This episode was lovely in so many ways and heart-wrenching in so many other ways. It was lovely with the way they developed Joel and Ellie's relationship. I mean, I'm a little annoyed we missed three months, but I do also completely understand that, like, this would be the longest show ever if we had to see, like, most of three months' worth of travel. I kind of wouldn't have minded like a montage of it or at least maybe a couple of days immediately after what happened in Kansas City because it was a lot for them to process. But I think you could kind of, even though we didn't see it, you could tell what their relationship was. They were even more at ease with each other by the time we met them. Yes, there was still the barrier between them of Sarah, of his pain, of that kind of, of her being terrified that well, the minute we find Tommy, you're just going to leave me. Like there was still... A distance between them but they were so much more at ease with each other than they had been and that was really lovely to see um you know that i was three months of her just chattering away like kids do and him good-naturedly uh, keeping up with it and pretending to be gruff and annoyed with her when he really wasn't like i just they grew so close and then finding their animal old people um you know I, I can kind of i get the people of this town jackson they look out for each other and they need to deter bad people. I get it. I get why people that live across the river might think of you as evil demon people. There obviously are bad people around. We know there are groups of raiders and you need to keep your town as safe as you can. Um, there is a danger in a way with having such a civilised, peaceful, lovely place to live, which is that the majority of the people are not on edge, which is good, but they're not all braced for an attack. You don't have, like, everyone able to fight or whatever because you don't necessarily think you need to it was very strange to kind of see this normality even though it was very different to the world we live both in the sense that it was like an idealistic utopian paradise of like people actually caring about each other and looking out for each other and like yes it wouldn't work like that exactly like that in the real world but fucking that should be the dream we're working towards not capitalism um <laughs> but it was so surreal to kind of see like the electricity in the movies and a school and all the normal things that you kind of think that is the sort of place that Fedra should have been building and they could have been building. I know that I imagine within the Fedra cities there were schools and there were like things you could do. I don't think they were like detention camps, but in the Fedra held areas, it felt like even after 20 years, you were living in the dead remnants of a civilization that was long gone and there was barely any hope. Like, it felt quite miserable in those places. Whereas in Jackson, they had actually built themselves a community and turned it into something fresh. And I really think Fedra should have been doing that for the last 20 years. Okay, maybe for the last 15 years, once they initially dealt with the, like, first everything happening. 
they could still be in control they could i mean i still also have said season since the pilot that they should have moved towards democratic elections but regardless like even with federate in charge they could have made a better place to live than where they were living so it was really lovely to see that there there are little pockets like this i imagine and then of course i mean there are raiders and slavers and everything else um but joel joel has been giving everything to find his brother he was relatively safe he had you know good system going with his smuggling in boston um tess would still be alive if he wasn't worried about tommy i don't blame tommy for leaving i think you can definitely see that he and joel had a very traumatic experience immediately after they you know did bad things became bad people to stay alive and i i don't blame them i don't love them for it but i think especially when you think of Joel just watched another human shoot his daughter because someone ordered him to like you're not gonna go away from that in like a let's be peaceful and kind to people mind state you know especially not when you're immediately fighting to survive um and so I can see Tommy wanting some distance especially when Joel is still in the middle of his grief and not dealing with that grief and again I don't particularly blame him because the fucking world has ended you know I honestly think it's a miracle Joel is still alive and didn't you know walk off a bridge or something because there's nothing to live for in the world they live in um i mean he had tess he had his brother out there i'm glad he didn't but you know you can see why tommy maybe needed some distance and wanted to do something like the fireflies to try and make a difference to try and right wrongs and then ended up here but i almost feel like he should have sent joel a message that was like you and tess um come to me i'm in wyoming I'll meet you and like met them five mile or like every once a month I presume people still track months once a month on like the, the 12th of every month I'll be at xyz on the radio because then you know and just be like I need your help and like don't say we have a beautiful peaceful community full of wonderful community like we've got so much stuff it's such a wonderful place here because that would attract bad people he could have done something to try and get Joel to come to him um, to try and get Joel to come to safety and to be together or even to just freaking let Joel know he was okay um, he did kind of abandon Joel when Joel was in his worst grief but I will also give Tommy that the, little, the world had ended it wasn't exactly like he was doing great himself and obviously he did care about Sarah as well but more than his daughter um, and I kind of I think part of what makes me feel a bit like Tommy abandoned Joel is that when we met them in 2003 from what um, Sarah had said it was like Joel had always been looking out for Tommy. When Tommy needed a place to stay, he lived with Joel. When Tommy needed a job, Joel got him a job. Like, maybe he could have let him stand on his own two feet a little bit, but he was always looking out for his brother. And when Joel kind of needed that in response, Tommy looked out for himself first and foremost, instead of looking out for his brother, which may even be a healthy thing to do. But, you know, I understood why Joel was struggling. I think I absolutely adore my... The way they really brilliantly showed the increase in Joel's caring about Ellie. I mean, we have kind of seen that since the previous episode, but the absolute terror on his face when that dog was walking towards her. I mean, realistically, there is no way to save her at that point. I think it's part, I mean, him saying, I didn't do anything to protect her. What could you have done? If the dog had attacked her, maybe you could have tried to pull it off. Maybe you could have got between them, but then they would have just shot her. Because the second the dog attacks her, the people are, and they don't, they aren't actually sadistic people. So probably the second the dog started attacking her, someone would have just shot her so that a child wasn't mauled by a dog. You know, they had to just act tough in case they were bad people. Um, you know, the minute, if that dog had reacted like either one of them was infected, regardless of if they managed to get rid of the dog, they would have been shot to death. It was not a good situation. And being there with this kid you care about, people pointing guns at them, waiting on the orders on what to do, of course it's going to trigger him and bring back everything that happened with Sarah it's one of the things I've been saying all season is being around Ellie is going to be both the best and the worst thing for him because it's going to force him to confront some of that trauma that he naturally kind of pushes into a box he's never going to escape it he's never going to not think about Sarah I imagine he thinks about her first and last thing every single day but dealing with the pain and addressing it is a very different thing and being around Ellie being around any kid but especially a teenage girl around the same age Sarah was if not the exact same age Sarah was thinking about the uh, memorial, it's gonna bring back a lot of memories and you kind of some of the responses he has, the jokes he does, they're so kind of like you would do with um, with your kid with, or with a niece or nephew or with, you know, like a, a friend's kid or whatever. Um, and I think it will be really healing for him in so many ways 
because he needs to address this pain. You know, you can't heal a wound if you pretend it's not there. So I really loved, I loved seeing how scared he was because it made me realize like how much he loved her, but also how much his terror was taking over and the sort of the panic attack moments we saw when things were seeming hopeless. And, you know, it's one thing when you can kind of push everything aside and be like, I'm getting this kid to this location. When you get to that location and then there's no answers, that is when you panic. And we really saw that. And then I think once they were in Jackson and once he saw this kind of happy world and found that his brother had both been living completely safe, completely happy, had got married, was having a kid, you know, was doing better than he was doing before the world fell apart, that would be hard to swallow at first. And like I'm glad Tommy said towards the end, it doesn't mean he's not happy for his brother. It just means it's really hard to see because he's human. And I think the minute he found this place, this security, this safety, and he saw that his brother that he has spent so much time worrying about was actually doing really great for himself and could probably look out for Ellie as well. I think that's when the panic almost began to overwhelm him even more because he no longer, it, fight and flight could kind of die down a little bit. He never fully died down, you know, he was like, I'm getting my supplies, I'm going to fix my shoe, I'm going to really determinedly, but it was a lot for him to deal with. And then being in a normal home with Ellie being in like a girl's bedroom um, would be a lot for him. And their conversation, you know, it was a lot. I'm glad she knows about Sarah. I kind of wish he'd told her about Sarah, but at the same time, I don't think he was ever going to tell her about Sarah because it does explain a lot, it explains so much about why he acts like he doesn't care about her and doesn't want to care about her, yet is so good with her and clearly does care about her. Um, and you know, him sort of saying, you know, nothing about loss and her pointing out that, well, you know, being born post, post 2003, her whole life has been lost to a, like she never knew her parents, everyone she's ever loved has died. And, you know, I'm sure there's more to it than the stuff we even know at this point. Um, she doesn't know loss in the way he does and I pray that she never ever does you know if she ever were to have children uh, however she wanted to acquire them um I pray she never has to lose them but she does know what it's like to be alone and to be scared and she is a kid that I just thought they were both very vulnerable with each other and honest in that moment and as much as yeah it ended with slamming doors and like oh well go I'll right at dawn it was good for them both to kind of voice those fears because he because you know he said like I care about you so much I don't want to leave I, I can't be the one looking after you because I can't see you die and she you know I'm going to be terrified if it's not you and ultimately he slept on it he went to go steal a horse and then he realized that as always it should be Ellie's choice and if he she feels safest with him he will do everything he can to keep it that way so it was really lovely it was hard but they just this shows like I mean I already knew that Bella Ramsey and Pedro Pascal were fantastic actors but they're just so good and everyone else in it is really good as well um I also did love that Joel finally talked about his feelings um I know I said it I think during the reaction I presume I left it in the edited version that there is a real problem in society though TV in general has done media has done better over the last like 10 years with men being manly and tough means you don't ever admit feelings you don't talk about your feelings you don't cry you don't let anyone know you're struggling and you know sure every single human there are points in life where it's good to do that but the majority of the time you need to let those feelings out you need to feel them otherwise you're going to bottle them up and collapse and have a panic attack in a, an opportune moment so i love that when he was with his brother and they kind of made peace he was able to tell him that in his dreams he fails he wakes up and he fails he, fa he feels like he failed sarah he failed tess and he is so scared that he's going to fail ellie he sees this brilliant bright spark of a girl who yes she does have the ability to save the world and that is why we do need to save her but just for who she is she deserves to be saved and he's so scared he's going to fail this child and be the thing that causes her downfall and he's going to have to watch her die as well um i think it's very important that he addressed that and he said it out loud and that she heard at least some of that but that he knows that she does have that faith in him and she does care about him and he does care about her and he owes it to her and because they care about each other to be there for her so it was then really lovely to watch them over those five days that they were traveling just being at ease with each other in a way that they they were more at ease when we first saw them this episode and they were even more at ease at that point um, it was just absolutely lovely to watch and then the ending I knew something terrible was going to happen and I have to believe he's not dead right now because there are three episodes left and yeah he's not dead right now because I say so um also I feel like there would have been a shot of him like 
lying there eyes open like very dead and ellie being like i can't like you know i know we did see her crying and saying like i can't do this alone and i'm fucking stressed about it um but regardless it's not ideal because being stabbed in the stomach I mean, you, you don't take the knife out you, you just you don't take the knife out i mean maybe when you're in shock you take the knife out but it just more bleeding happens if you take knife out blood, blood comes bleed 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 i was like when he was like fighting that guy i was like oh someone's gonna shoot him or something and then of course he's fucking stabbed um I think you can see how capable Ellie is, but also how much life experience she already has, despite her young age, from the way she was able to be like, Joel, get on the horse. Joel, get us out of here. Stay back. I'm going to fire at you. Like, she took control of that situation when Joel was not able to. And I think it shows you how much she cares about him, but also how strong she is as a person. And this is her greatest fear. You know, she said in the previous episode, I'm scared of being alone because her whole life she's ended up alone. Like, she's trusted someone. She's had people. They've died. They've left. And it will mean the world to her that Joel gave her. I mean, yeah, they didn't have any big emotional conversations about it. Just the minute, it's your choice. And she was like, let's go. I do kind of feel like Tommy could have gone with them as well. Although I also understand him wanting to stay behind for his child. Um, just because Tommy knew the way and maybe knew like, oh, that bit of the forest is dangerous. We'll go this way. Um, right now, I honestly do. I All I can imagine is Ellie will have to try and drag Joel into one of the train cars or if there's a building nearby try and get some kind of a fire going can she stitch his wound can she like quarter I, I don't even know i'm not believing he's dead so if i'm supposed to be crying my eyes out because he's dead right now i refuse um i know i had a bit of a net crisis at the end of the episode about whether i should be googling it or not i mean i was never actually going to google it i just wanted to so that i knew what reaction i should be having right now and i refuse for my reaction to be that he's dead because no I feel like there would have been a more final like he's definitely dead moment if he was dead and if that if he's supposed to be dead you didn't do a good enough job okay but if we're supposed to be terrified for a week then he might be dead you did a fucking good job um i feel like joel has to be in it to the end of this season and maybe he'll die in the finale or something again i don't know for sure that he dies i just feel like potential spoiler alert i don't know i've not played the games when the last of us 2 came out i feel like i heard that it was more like just about Ellie and maybe that he died, but I genuinely, for all I know, he's just old and therefore haven't raised sheep. I know he doesn't want to raise sheep anymore, but I don't know. I'm, I'm stressed. I, just, I don't think this is how he's going to die. But of course, that does mean in the next episode, it's going to be all on Ellie. They are five days away from allies. They have whatever supplies they had on them. Now, they are fairly close to a hospital full of supplies. I mean, okay, I wouldn't say full of supplies after 20 years probably been picked fairly clean of good medical supplies um but it is a lot for anyone to deal with let alone a 14 year old kid um and the fear that one of those men do decide to follow their tracks it's very stressful i am very excited for the next episode but i am gonna spend the next week being like he's not dead yet he's not dead at all because i also when when i don't like what happens in shows i do rewrite them so if he if he if they want me to believe he's dead he just got a little bit injured so ellie just took him back to jackson and he's living there quite happily um i will rewrite my endings in my head and i will live happily that way and you can't stop me this episode was fantastic this show just gets i don't know when i say i, I wanted to say the show gets better and better and by that i don't mean that this episode was any better than the previous one i just mean that it's the kind of show that just keeps building on itself and the strength of its characters and their development and their relationships so that it does just get better and better reminder that you can find the unedited version of this reaction on my patreon and thank you so much for watching